In the other video, we looked at PlayStation 2. Today is going to be PlayStation 1, my top 10 list. Starting off at number 1, Time Crisis. 1995, we got to see an arcade port of an on-rail awesome arcade game that was about two agents stopping a group of bad guys and we got to see a peripheral with this one. I had a great time with this game. I always played it whenever I saw it in the arcade and when it was on the PlayStation 1, I definitely snagged this up day one. I had to play it. There were so many arcade ports but this was the one that I always go to and I remember playing it with my brother and having a classic time with all the buddies when we came over. We would take turns seeing who can get the highest score, who can get the most levels done. And when we finally beat the game, we all cheered and had a great time with it. So this is why it's number 10. At number 9 is a game that is immediately, as soon as I say, kick, punch, it's all in the mind. You automatically know what game I'm talking about, right? For Rapper, The Rapper. This game was a rhythm game that was the first time it actually used rapping as part of the songs and took a lot of inspiration and had a great time with all the rhythm, all the game. And it wasn't easy like the other arcade classic games or rhythm games that came into effect. And I didn't mind that. I loved that it was so unique, so different. And there was characters that you would see that were not human. They were onions and cows and different people that were, you didn't know what they were. They were a flower. You're like, what is going on? And I had a great time with this. I enjoyed the game so much that I picked it up on the PSP when they released it for the 10th anniversary. And I did pick it up for the PS4. Sadly, it didn't do as well as I hoped it would. And I was hoping for like a reboot of the other two. So cross your fingers. Hope that one day we get the other games to be ported on and maybe one day we'll get something new. At number eight was a game that was actually on the 3DO first. And then when it was such a classic hit that everybody was asking about it, it got ported to the PlayStation. And that is Gex, one of the first games to be launched on the PlayStation and had the long box. Sadly, I don't have the long box, but I do have the jewel case version. This guy was funny. Gex was trying to take humor and Easter eggs from cult classics like 007 and different things like that. And you would see and you'd be like, oh, they're referencing this one from the 90s, referencing that movie, this movie, that movie. And I had a great time with it. All the levels were unique and different. Their platforming was centered around a gecko and he could climb on walls, he could do different things. And that's why I enjoyed this game so much, that they trolled you in the game. Yes, I did f get frustrated when I streamed it because I forgot about all the trolling. But when you first saw it, you're like, oh, uh, you did that, okay. So one of the few developers to actually mess with you and I had a great time with it. At number seven was another game where we had a green guy and this one is actually a crocodile and it's Croc. This was also an inspiration from many platformers we saw. It took stuff from like Spyro the Dragon and Crash Bandicoot and meshed them together. Basically, you would be thrown into a world, didn't know what was going on, kind of like Spyro, but you had to platform like Crash Bandicoot. And I enjoyed the story. You were saving the gobbers and they were little fluffy guys sprinkled around the little area and you had to figure out, okay, there's one up here, there's one over here, so I have to figure out how to open this gate or I have to figure out how to get to this platform. I enjoyed the different aspects of the game. I liked that it was difficult and that it gave you no hand holding at this one. It's kind of like Tomb Raider, but I enjoyed the little feel of it. It gave you a little bit of time to figure out the story. And you didn't really need to know the story also. If you were like, oh, I just want to play the game, you could do that as well. You didn't have to listen to a bunch of story. You got the story at the very beginning and then you just kept saving them until the very end when you battled the final boss. Enjoy the final boss. It was a great one. So definitely check this out for sure. Just like many other consoles, there was so many racing games on the PlayStation that it was hard to choose just one. But the one that took the slot was Gran Turismo. And the reason why Gran Turismo was on there was because it had not just racing. It had simulation mode. There was a mode where you could earn money to buy new cars. And at the time, me and my brother and a bunch of other buddies enjoyed just having a little notebook, writing everything down. There, oh, I have 10,000, you have 20,000, you have 30,000. Okay, you can only buy this much. And basically, we would pull the money together if we really wanted to get this awesome car. And you use the cars to race and get better and better and better and better to the point where you could have a huge lineup of cars and just 
every lineup was able to be saved onto a memory card so there was unlimited cars you can get and i enjoyed the racing aspect of it was more like real racing than just like i understood ridge racer and i loved it but i did like the fact that this was trying to be as close as it could to real racing at number five is a horror classic made by team silent and that is silent hill you are Harry, and you are in a car accident looking for your daughter, and you don't know what happened to her. And you're in a mysterious world of, this town looks familiar. I was talking about this town, but now I don't know where to go or what to do. And then you find maps along the way, and then you're like, okay, so I keep seeing my daughter running around. Where is she? Where is this? Where is that? And you see gruesome creatures that scared the crap out of you to the point where you're like, shit, I could die at any point. And I don't have saves. It's not like some of the other games where saves were abundant. This was one of the few games where you had to strategically figure out where you're going to save and when you're going to save. And if you found some random thing, you're like, oh great, I don't have enough ammo. I don't have enough this. I'm dead. <laughs> so you had to figure out, should I go back? Should I figure it out? Where should I go? But I enjoyed the puzzles. I enjoyed the simulation of the fog and, and feeling eerie. So now every time I see fog... I go, we're in Silent Hill and we're all going to die. And I think everybody else who's played this game does the same thing. After that was a fighting game that I couldn't decide, but it finally settled because of several reasons. And the game I'm talking about is Tekken 3. Tekken 3 took aspects of the first two games and then modified it and made it unique to where you could do sidestepping for all the characters. You could do reversals for all the characters because in the first two, only so many characters could do that. And it was a nice add-on to finally give you where no matter what character you played, everybody could reverse and everybody could sidestep and jump and do different things to figure out how to block and stop the person from attacking you. I had a great time with this. I enjoyed the story. I loved the soundtrack. The feel of the, the outfits were nice to add to them. And it wasn't just like everybody was all powerful. It was like everybody was equal. And this was the first one of the first games where you felt like no matter if it was a power or fast, I could still figure out how to battle that character and move on to the next level. And I really enjoyed the final boss for this one. This was a great story. You got to follow Jin. And not that I didn't like Heiachi and the other storylines, but I really enjoyed Jin's story and that's why they got a cartoon for it. So... I keep going. I want to play Tekken 8. I want Tekken to keep going forever. I just enjoy the whole aspect of the franchise. And that is why it is on the top 10 list. Just like Tekken, I also had a debate about which game to add to the list for Resident Evil. And I started and jumped back and forth. And then I finally settled on the classic original Resident Evil. And the reason why is because I remember every part of this game. I know all of the mansion. I know where to go, what to do. I can blaze through this. If I make a mistake, I know I made a stupid mistake. And so everything was classic. I enjoyed the FMV of this game. The really bad acting is what also sold it <laughs> as to why this made the list and not the other ones. FMV was always a staple in many of the games. And I enjoyed that they took this and got actors from Japan and decided to throw it in there and I also liked the classic line that Jill sandwich one was another reason why I made the list but to know that this dropped and this was one of the first games it was on a long box and it's had so many iterations of it this is why it's going to be on everybody's top 10 list everybody's going to have an RE game but I'm going to have this one because I played it so many times. I play it all the time. I tried to beat it as many times as I can and add it to, hey, I finished it. It's in October. I played it. Don't add it to the beat list, but I add it every five years. And so this is why I'm going to always have RE on a top 10 list. At number two, I also tossed up and debated about which game to go for. And I went with what was I more anticipating and what was I more laughing about? And that was number one. Number one for Crash Bandicoot was a staple. I always played it and beat it as many times as I could. This was one of the few games that dropped on the launch list that I was ecstatic for. I enjoyed the commercials for Crash Bandicoot to the point where I was like, yeah, talk smack tomorrow. Go do what you gotta do. But I also liked that the first game was a staple. I know every level. I know back and forth when I want to go back and farm lives and when to go and play again. So this one will always be my top 10 because 
I was just ecstatic to play it. And as a little kid slash middle schooler, I had a great time with it and I will always go back and throw this in and play it. And streaming it might not be one of my things to do, but definitely will play it as many times as I can. You're saying to yourself, number two was Crash Bandicoot. What has to be number one? Because you had an exclusive and yet you didn't go with an exclusive. And it's like, well, the reason why is because at 1999, there was a game that dropped that was blowing my mind. And that is Tony Hawk. The soundtrack, the skaters, the levels, they're all classic. Just like Crash Bandicoot in any of the other games, I play this all the time. I have 100%ed it several times, and I have been to the point where I'm like, this is my game, this is my jam. I used to just leave the game in and play it as a CD all the time, which sadly I couldn't do for Crash Bandicoot because I kind of got tired of the songs. That's why I bumped it up to number one. I could leave this in, play the songs, just go walk around and enjoy and play music while I'm doing my homework, different things like that. So Tony Hawk, they did a great job. He made sure that everything was on point and I just, I can jam out to that every time. And there you have it, everybody. There is my top 10 for PlayStation 1. Let me know what were your top 10s for PlayStation 1. Tell me in the comments, what were your thoughts on some of the picks that I made? And I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Keep on gaming. the gamer gal she's here she's playing games linda the gamer gal she's here she's playing games today